as the Pittsburgh Steelers continue to look at how they're going to finalize their 53-man roster, we take a look at a story by our friend Alan Saunders about two receivers they're looking at specifically. We'll talk about them, the wide receiver room as a whole, and why Keanu Benton might be the top breakout candidate for the Steelers this season, all here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things in the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find this show on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoy it. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all of your daily Monday through Friday episodes, as well as our bonus content. Thank you for making us your first listen every day because we're your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel now. Through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can get can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. As I said before, we're joined by the man himself, Alan Saunders. He's back on the show. We love having Alan here. And Alan, you got some reporting stuff you did on Monday. The Steelers looking to make moves, not making moves, but looking to make moves, inquiring about other receivers not named Brandon Ayuk. What can you say about your reporting, sir, at SteelersNow.com? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to make too much of this i feel like this happens all the time at this time of year in every sport right where it's like you, know, you get around the baseball trade deadline and they're like oh my gosh did you see the the angels have a scout here tonight i'm like yeah man the angels the scouts watch the game that's that's what they that's their literal job <laughs> i'm guessing there's a lot of general managers that have checked in on guys like john mechie and Ch- tim patrick but i was able to confirm that the steelers are among them uh i know there's been a lot of interest in mechie Seems like the interest is the other way. Denver seems to be a motivated seller trying to drum up some interest for Tim Patrick. I know that Omar or somebody in the Steelers front office has checked in. Uh, that's still doing their job. Anytime there's a player available, they they should be checking it. Doesn't mean anything's gonna happen, um, but it it certainly I think uh, you know is an interesting thing to think about. Both of those two players, um, you know, I think represent potential additions to the team. Uh, that makes sense. You know, it's one thing if you're just, you know, talking about a general manager doing his due diligence. It's another thing when you look at the player and say, oh, hey, this could fit. This could work. And, and certainly the Steelers, we, we will talk about their wide receiver room as a whole um, in a bit here. We talked about it a little bit with Nick Farabaugh uh, for the Monday episode. But, you know, you look at these two different guys. Again, these are, these are just do, these two specific guys. Not saying this definitely is going to happen, but the type of receivers the Steelers are looking for right now. John Mechie, second year player, played played last season. You know, made made some plays here here and there. Has a lot of promise uh, for his future. But also Tim Patrick. Now Tim Patrick, I think he's a kind of a different cut of guy where he can, he came into the league. No one really knew about him. He developed. And he eventually became a really good playmaker for the Broncos, uh, especially in 2020 and 2021, um, when he was able, when he was able to make plays there. Um, but now he's in a position where the Steelers could be looking at, at bringing him in. What's the difference between these guys that you can explain to our audience and how these guys would operate if they were in the Steelers' offense? I think Tim Patrick is a clearer fit for like that sort of like second outside receiver position. Um, I think he brings something to an Arthur Smith offense specifically. He's 6'4", about 215. Uh, blocks pretty well for a wide receiver. So I think he brings that kind of physicality that they're going to want uh, to the position. You know, he's not a guy who's super explosive. It's probably why he went undrafted. Um, but I think he makes an interesting pairing with George Pickens. You know, I think when Juju Smith-Schuster became available, a lot of people were asking, well, what about Juju? It's like, yeah, I don't know about his knees. I feel like it's a lot of the same conversation here. Tim Patrick, mm-hmm. last two seasons, one ACL, one torn Achilles, has been injured. I just don't know how healthy he is and what kind of player you'll be getting in 2024 compared to yeah. the guy that we saw way back in 2021. I like the 2021 version of Tim Patrick. I just don't know what you're getting right now. I probably need to put in some tape and go watch what he did in Denver's preseason, but I haven't done that yet, you know, and I, so I don't really want to give an opinion on what he looks like coming out of those injuries. Mechie, on the other hand, another guy with some injuries, but at least 
uh, a couple of years in his past now. Had that knee injury his last year at Alabama. Then he got the cancer diagnosis on top of that that kind of washed out his entire rookie season, came back one week into last season, and now it just seems like this is a young player that was always pretty promising, was a second-round pick, but it's about opportunity. You look at the Texans, they're pretty stacked. They got Tank Dell, Nico Collins, Stephon Diggs, even their second – Tier guys, guys like Robert yeah. Woods, Noah Brown, Xavier Hutchinson, they're loaded. They got too many guys. They got to unload someone somewhere. I don't know why. I, I think, I guess because Mechie is a former second round pick, he probably has more value to the rest of the league than someone like Noah Brown or someone like Robert Woods, who's on the, the backside of his career. And so I think that's probably why he, he, he's the one that's kind of getting floated out there as a trade option. He's a smaller receiver. He doesn't necessarily have that perfect fit in Arthur Smith's scheme. I think he's probably more of a slot or a flanker type, not like another uh, X uh, receiver like like Patrick could be. But Patrick's played the big slot role as well, uh, that kind of, kind of juju role. But, you know, I, I think Mechie is, is about an upside swing more than anything. It's about a guy who was a second-round pick, has a lot of talent, you hope to you hope you find something in the bargain bin that turns out to be worthwhile. Uh, I think that's the the mindset there more than it is about the specific player and his fit with the offense. I mean, that's ultimately what you're doing at this time of the year, right? Like teams aren't just giving away really good players. They're 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 stacked at positions where they can't fit certain guys who are talented, and so they have to find a way to offload those guys but get something in return so that they're not just giving away guys that would make most teams but just doesn't make their team because they're really loaded there, like you said, with the Texans with their wide receiver position. Um, So I feel you on Mechie, especially on the upside. I mean, this guy was a second-round pick just last year, so, like, you know, there's there's potential that people have seen. But Tim Patrick is interesting to me. If he could be healthy enough to actually play and get back to where he was in, in 2020 and 2021, uh, where he was averaging over 700 yards a season, had six touchdowns one year, five touchdowns the next. If he could just give you that, and even not even that specifically, if he, if he gave them like 400 yards and four touchdowns as like another outside option there who could be consistent and, and, and you know, actually create some depth on the outside where Van Jefferson and him and Pickens could be their primary options, that is worth – significant uh, that has significant worth to Arthur Smith's offense because again I don't think the number two receiver on this team is going to be a bell cut it's not it's not going to they're not going to be lighting up the scoreboard their job is going to be to get open provide opportunities to make plays and pinches and to just be a steady presence there I think that's why they got Van Jefferson because he's very much in that role Tim Patrick as a veteran could fit that role but I'm with you on Mechie like I, I think the potential of this, this, the high ceiling is very attractive, but how quickly would he adapt to your system? And then where would he fit in your system? And would you just be adding another guy that's kind of more in the slot role than necessarily in the outside role that they're trying, that they look like they might be trying to add to. Yeah. And he's also, you know, he's five eleven. He's, he's not that big. I think he's a little, you know, he's, he's pretty much the same, sort of body style type is Roman Wilson. Like you're getting a lot of the same yeah. uh, there. Um, and so I think that's a downside. But also, like you said, teams aren't just giving away good players. Houston's in a pretty unique situation here. Where else are you going to find a second round pick who's probably not going to cost you very much at this time of year? You know, I think it's it's not a perfect fit in terms of the X's and O's, but I think it's a it's a good bet on the upside in terms of just – Pick, it's the best possible receiver they're going to get outside of Brandon Ayuk right now. Like I don't see anybody better than that coming available on the next, you know, twelve to twenty-four hours to one week's time. So you know, I think I don't know. I, I you can argue that it's not a perfect fit, but I think I think he's probably the best player they can get too. I hear you on that. Let's move on to more talk here. I want to focus more on the receivers as well as some news that we got on on Monday or slight news. We'll get to that next here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, with Alan Saunders of SteelersNow.com. Stick with us. We'll be right back. But first, we'll remind you, this show is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the number one sportsbook in America. You've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. And, well, we have something a little different for you this month. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 on FanDuel Sportsbook and get a three-week 
free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then, with a YouTube TV-based plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel at any time. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to download America's number one sportsbook today. That's FanDuel at FanDuel.com slash locked on. We're back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, here with Alan Saunders of SteelersNow.com. Alan, um, I want to talk real quick before we get to the receiver room, quick, quick updates on injury stuffs that we that we saw on Monday. Roman Wilson, not fully back or anything, but at least moving around a little bit more, showing signs of progress. Uh, so that seemed like a good thing there for, 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 the, for the rookie who really didn't get to do much of training camp, if at all. Uh, but I thought the real big news was Jalen Warren talking like he's going to be ready to go against Atlanta. I think that's huge for what this Steelers offense needs. Yeah, I think the Steelers have been pretty cautious with a lot of these injuries. I think you're going to see mm-hmm. a whole bunch of guys over the next five or six days uh, suddenly get very healthy. I think Roman Wilson could be one of them. Jalen Warren certainly, I think, will play uh, in the opener. I don't know if he's going to return kicks, but I think he'll probably do everything else that he's been doing. Um, and and you know, guys like Joey Porter, who's been held out, Corey Trice, who's been held out. I, I think largely um, – that I, I don't think there's a lot of concern in my eyes about – that group of players coming back. Troy Fatone is the one guy I think I'm a little, a little curious yeah. about uh, with that knee sprain. You know, uh, I, I know it was reported maybe it was only could be a couple of weeks. I think that's probably the very front end of that injury. So that's one probably need to monitor. And then it was reported that Dylan Cook's out a couple of weeks. Um, but other than that, I think you're going to see a largely fairly healthy Steelers team for week one. I, I think it's a really good sign for the Steelers and keeping an eye on Troy Faltano because that's something that, you know, was kind of made to be that it wasn't a big deal. But here we are week before, you know, we got one, you know, one week before week one starts in the NFL and still not sure about his status there. But we'll keep you up to date on that. But I want to talk to you more about Allen, about the current makeup of the Steelers receiver room and where it is kind of now after the after the preseason has been finished. Uh, we got a chance to talk to Van Jefferson. And so I wanted to give a chance to play what we heard from him. Uh, you know, one not just about the, the the guys behind George Pickens, but George Pickens himself, where is he as you know a wide receiver one for this team? Because it's bigger than just making the plays. It's also being the person that can be the per, you know, be the leader of the room. And George Pickens has often said he's he's a leader by by you know, he's a he's a he's a leader by example. He doesn't he doesn't you know vocalize as much. Wanted to got a chance to catch up with Van Jefferson about what George Pickens has done right in this offseason and well as how they complement each other. Here's Van Jefferson from Steelers locker room on Monday. George talks about being a leader by example in the wide receiver room. How have you seen him be a leader in, in this training camp and leading up to the, the regular season? Yeah, just the way that he works, you know, the way that he, uh, he goes about his business. You know, um, you know, we all know the type of player that George is, but I think behind the scenes, we don't see how, you know, how hard he works and how much he cares about the game. So, um, you know, he's a great, great person to be around, a great player to, you know, play, play with on the field. So um, you just seen him grow over the OTAs and out to here. So I'm um, excited for him this year and I know he's going to have a big year. How do you feel you two complement each other as guys when you line up on the same field? What defenses have to worry about? Yeah, well, like I said, I mean, you know how explosive George is and what he can do and the defense have to account for him. You know, um, at the end of the day, I just want to play my part and be on the side that I'm on and, you know, you know, help him get open. And, um, you know, when the ball comes my way, get open too as well. So I think we just both, you know, match each other. But, you know, at the end of the day, we all got a lot of guys here that can play too as well. And, um, you know, I look at Dez, the game he had last, you know, against Detroit, man. He had a huge game. And he's been putting that on in the preseason all this whole time. So just in, including all the other receivers too as well. So, um, you know, it's, uh, we're just all the collective that's trying to go out here and play and win. So, Alan, I do think that Van Jefferson has been really good in the training camp in the preseason. I think that he's shown the makings of being one of those, you know, backup guys to George and the show that he is going to be this season. I think George Pickens is lined up. But I think that that's the thing, though. They need another Van Jefferson, if not just for injury sake, but also just for putting those guys on the field and needing to rotate through those guys there is – where have you seen this wide receiver room grow, if if grow at all? Like, are, are, is your opinion changed on any of these guys compared to where they were at start of camp? Where, where's your mindset on this group? It's interesting. That's the first time I heard that uh, interview with Van, and I had talked to Russell Wilson after the preseason game in Detroit, 
and I asked him about George, and it's interesting. The thing he said was almost exactly the same. Mm. He he went straight to how hard George works, and you know I've been here with George for two years, and I think he's an incredible wide receiver. I don't think, in my experience over two years, the work ethic is something that what I would say has been stand out about it's George. One of the critiques of George Pickens, right? So I think to hear that from Van Jefferson and Russell Wilson, two guys who are new to this team, new to George, to come into this locker room and say, hey, this guy's working really hard. Uh, to me, I think that's meaningful. So to hear that from both of those guys, uh, I just think that stands out. And I think, honestly, yes, the rest of the wide receiver room needs to be better than it is, probably should be better than it is. But I think there is a big difference between, like, so-so wide receivers, two, three, four, five with the George Pickens the Steelers had versus the George Pickens realizing his full potential this season. And honestly, I think that's probably just as important as what they do with the rest of the wide receiver room. If you have a true out-and-out -out superstar, one of the best wide receivers in the game, and you look at Pickens and you see the talent is there, clearly it's possible, um, that's very different than you have like the guy with George Pickens numbers the last two seasons with some Van Jeffersons and some Calvin Austins around him. I think that changes the whole demeanor of the room. Um, I, I've been impressed with Van Jefferson, but I don't think he scares defenses. You know, I think he can do the job, but I don't think he's going to take any pressure off of Pickens. I don't think he's going to draw any coverage away from Pickens. Yeah, It's basically going to, it's, it doesn't matter how good Van Jefferson looks. Like No one's going to be afraid of him. And so it's still putting everything on George, really becoming a guy who can go beat double teams, who can go take one-on-one -on -one guys and, and have their top corners follow them all around the field and still find a way to beat them, who can expand that route tree and go into the middle of the field and run slants and not just be a go-ball guy. Uh, I think that, to me, is probably the biggest part of this story, bigger than – what the rest of these guys can do. I mean, Roman Wilson's hurt, third round rookie, he's undersized. He played in an offense that barely threw in college. Like, I think our expectations for him should be pretty low. Not saying he can't exceed that, but like, I, I don't think you should be counting on him to be some huge part of this passing offense, certainly not early on in his rookie season. Calvin Austin, I think we kind of know what he is. He can play a role, but I don't think it's going to be a big, massive one. Like, there doesn't seem to be someone else in that room to carry a load. And right. I think, uh, if George isn't great, that's going to be a problem. And also, God forbid, if George gets hurt, if he gets hurt, that's a, that's a nightmare. It's a yeah. That's a nightmare scenario for the Steelers. I agree, but I I, I hear you on on that because I, I you know Russell Wilson saying that is 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 one thing, and then because I, I think Russell Wilson, like we've said, Russell Wilson's a politician. He he knows say the right things, do you know do do the right things, you know always cover all the bases, support your teammates, do all the so like when he says stuff, it's like okay. But for Van Jefferson to to say that and to talk about his work ethic and talk about what he does there, I think that does speak to something that George Pickens might be doing because again that was something that you know George Pickens supposedly wasn't like like you. There's guys on YouTube right now that still say that George Pickens doesn't run hard enough in his routes and he doesn't do this and he doesn't do that. But you know if it does translate, if George Pickens becomes the number one, and this this is something that I've been pointing out for a bit now it, you go back and you look at some of those 2010 offenses for the Steelers their number two receivers weren't you know Marcus Martavis Bryant and Juju Smith-Schuster some of the years it was Marcus Whedon some of the years it was Eli Rogers but a big part of the help that was Antonio Brown was the number one wide receiver and when you have a number one wide receiver like that it's it, it helps it helps make it so that you don't need supreme talent at these other spots not saying George Pickens is going to be Antonio Brown but if this is the year that he ascends into the next tier, like the tier right below Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase and those guys, putting himself in there with the Brandon Ayukes and, and those guys. I think this puts him in a whole different conversation. Heck, maybe if he gets to that Jamar Chase level, that's a whole other ball game, and that'd be great for his contract considering what we just saw Stevie Lamb get paid from the Cowboys. But if he gets there, it I think it lessens the 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 need for the Steelers to get all this extra help from all these other guys in the receiver room. And it also, I think, lends itself to the balance this team wants to have because then if you have to worry about a superstar wide receiver, you can have role-playing receivers behind him. And then it may, it may our team's going to pay that much attention to him or, you know, because then eventually you get Pat Frymuth and you get Darnell Washington and you get Najee Harris and Jalen Warren. And then teams have to pick 
what they're going to settle for beating them. And and I, I and it'll be interesting to see do they choose the balanced offense or the superstar wide receiver. That's why I think it is it is imperative that he gets to that point this year. And shout out Zach Azani, who by the way I forgot to say this is a former wide receivers coach for Tim Patrick from the Denver Broncos. Yeah, I think that's that was a big hire. And I think it's on Arthur Smith, too, to find some ways to scheme him open, even when he's getting opportunities. I, we didn't see any of that last year. It was like, oh, there's a safety shaded towards George Pickens. Fine, just don't throw there. Like, yeah. And like that, I, that can't be the solution for the Steelers this year. There's a safety shaded towards George Pickens. Arthur Smith needs to get in his bag and find a way to get him open anyway. Absolutely. And George Pickens said during, during camp, we had an interview that we played, he said that Arthur Smith is doing that. At least he thinks he's doing that in with what they're designing up in the offense to get him more shots deep down the field that aren't just go routes uh, like we've seen over the past few years. But a lot of a lot of positives there. I think one other positive, we talked about George Pickens being a, a big riser. I think there's another candidate for a person who could be the ultimate breakout stealer of the year. And I think it's Keanu Benton. I want to talk about why a film study that I that I did did that will be on the Post Gazette today. And I want to get Alan's thoughts as we also get uh, get responses from Keanu Benton in the locker room yesterday. All next here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. Chris Carter, Alan Saunders, stick with us. We'll be right back. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter, here with Alan Saunders of SteelersNow.com. Alan, uh, Keanu Benton, I thought, had a very good camp and maybe even in a better a better preseason. And preseason is always tough to say someone had like an amazing preseason because it's just preseason. But the things that I wanted to see from Keanu Benton, I wanted to see, could he get to the quarterback? He did it twice. Could he show different moves as a pass rusher? Did that all throughout you know, the, the summer thought he definitely showed he had that. And also, you know, did he have the motor that he could, that he could finish plays? Cause that was one thing he said himself at, at OTAs this year. He was like, Hey, like I did a lot of things I liked last year, but I didn't finish enough plays and I could, I, I worked on my conditioning so I could be ready for that. We talked to Carl Dunbar uh, in minicamp and he said, yeah, this kid's a whole different level of in shape because he doesn't have to worry about the combine and the pro days and all that stuff this year. And I think, in his preseason, we saw it relate. I went, I went back and looked. Last year, he had 22 pressures and like 270-ish uh, pass rush snaps as a rookie in the preseason. Again, it's just the preseason. I think he had 22 total snaps, or no, 18 snaps uh, in, in pass rush in the preseason, and he got pressure on four of them, sacks on two of them. Not saying that he's going to replicate that rate all the whole year, but I think you're seeing a more developed Keanu Benton, and I think that could be truly dangerous with this Steelers defense? I think it's a couple things, man. I think, first of all, Kenneth Benton's a really good player, and I think he's yeah. going to develop into a, a monster. I was actually asked, was on the final word on Sunday for breakout player, and he was my pick. I think he's the guy that is going to go from good to great this year. Um, I, I think he's a like future pro bowler. I think he's that good of a player. I think you're going to see yeah. it start to come out. Um, I also think he's going to get a great opportunity. Cam Hayward's 35. They don't need to play him every down anymore. Larry Ogunjobi's always dealt with injury problems. He probably doesn't need to play every down anymore. There's a ton of runway here for for Keanu Benton to, to go take a ton of reps, uh, play beyond just the nose, also play the three tech. I think he's developing there. Saw some of the pass rush moves on display in the preseason from that spot. I think there's tremendous upside there. And like I, I think – the second part of this is how much better can the Steelers defensive line be with the depth it's accumulated, starting with Keanu Benton, and then like DeMarvin Leal looks a lot better. Isaiah Loudermilk looks a lot better. Um, you know, and now like I think they can really, really roll and keep those guys fresh. And I think that's going to be a big difference maker. Nick Herbig, I mean, not the defensive line, but the front. I mean, like I talked about it on my podcast, Studios Afternoon Drive with Zachary Smith on Monday. The backup, backup front seven for the Steelers, pretty darn good. Yeah. Pretty darn good. If you got Nick Herbig in there, you got Peyton Wilson in there, uh, you got Lee Allen there. Like that's some guys that can get after the quarterback. And I think they're they're gonna come at people in waves. This is the the sort of Andy Weidel model, the Philadelphia model that we've seen. I, I they still need to invest in the position's future. Guys like Larry and Cam are probably not here for a long time. Man, right. I think I think this year looks really good. 
I think so too. Here's Keanu Benton. We got a chance to talk to him in the locker room today, uh, or yesterday, excuse me, at Steel at Steelers practice. Keanu, what are things about your game that you're seeing when you when you go back in film that are different from where you were as a rookie? Um, just me knowing the defense a lot better, um, and kind of just knowing what's coming my way, um, offensive wise. It seems like you, you've read like throughout the preseason, like, your performance has got a little bit better in game. Every single like last week, that first series, I know Nick got a couple of those sacks, but you were back every single time. What, how do you feel like you've progressed throughout the training camp preseason? Um, just not being nervous on doing anything, just trying moves out there. Um, like I said, knowing the defense helps a lot. Um, like last year, it just kind of knocks out that thinking about what to do part and just going out there and doing it. Your hands look very active. Like you're, you're always striking or doing something with them. It seems very pointedly. Is that something that you're able to do more freely now because you're not thinking about where everyone else is supposed to be? Yeah, and that's something I worked on this offseason, just being more active, um, not having just one move off the ball and then stopping staring for the quarterback, but just throwing moves out there and trying to get there. When I talked to you back in OTAs, the one thing you said you wanted to improve on finishing. You worked really hard on your conditioning to make sure that you could finish stronger on a lot of plays. Did you feel that throughout this preseason and training camp, the difference and the payoff of that work? Yeah, definitely. You know, um, just being able to have more plays, especially in camp, um, going out there not being super gassed. Of course, you get gassed, but just still being there mentally um, and not letting the fatigue mess with my brain and mess with what I need to do. One thing that Keanu Benton, uh, you know, it was pointed out by Carl Dunbar. He said, he said, we counted on film. That man let go. He had seven sack opportunities and we only got one of them. And he said part of it was he wasn't finishing enough. And he said, like last year, we understood it. He was getting But now his physique, his, his, his physique is there. He's like, this guy looks like a professionally trained football player. He there's no questions about it. A- Alan, you know, we talk about this defense and we, we've, we've said a lot of reasons why this defense could be elite. But. Something that I talked a little bit about Nick about, and also I talked a little bit after the Lions game, like, man, looking at this depth of the defensive line, that was one of my question marks going into this season was, man, how good can Benton be? Is DeMarvin Leal going to take a step up? Is Montrevious Adams going to be worth anything? Like, like is Larry Joby going to get back to where he was supposed to be you know, before he had that nagging injury? Can Cam Hayward get back to there? And just from Benton alone, the potential that this guy has, I mean, we're seeing – we're seeing a combinations of a club to a rip move, spin move, setting up other things. He and again, go check out my Post Gazette film study on him. I did I did a breakdown of things he was doing really well in both the Bills and the Lions preseason games. Um, this looks like a more polished pass rusher, and he's lining up zero technique right on the center. No, you know, right right on the nose. You'll come coming at you, getting in a gap really quickly. If the Steelers have a presence like that, who's young hungry and getting after it it's going to make offensive lines have fits when they're trying to plan for that and Cam Hayward and Larry Ogunjobi and TJ Watt and Alex Heisman that oh wait this Nick Herbie kid just came off the bench where the heck is he coming from yeah I think it it's a piece of the defense we haven't really seen a lot certainly not since Javon Hargrave was there and really I mean like uh, over the years very rarely ever have they gotten a lot of pass rush from that tackle position um you know, I think that Keanu really has an elevated pass rush skill set compared to most of the guys I've had in there. He's a little bit slimmer this year. I think he's going to be a little bit quicker. Probably, and, and the the thing that's great about it is, yeah, like you have him as the nose and Cam as the end, but Cam's so good against the run that like you don't, you don't feel like you're losing anything by having this sort of pass forward player uh, on the nose and Keanu. I think it brings a different dynamic to the team. And so – uh, I think, I think the defensive line is looks really good this year. I don't think they have all the parts for the future to feel good about it for a long time. It's sort of the opposite of the offensive line. The offensive line has all the pieces that are going to be here. They're just not good yet. The defensive line is good now. They got to find some future answers going forward for for some of these older guys. Absolutely, we still got a lot to cover before the Steelers' first game in over in, in, a, in like a week and a half now. Uh, but. There's a lot of angles to cover. Steelers practice continues Tuesday and Wednesday before they take their four-day mandatory break. We'll be there at the facility. Alan, thank you so much for joining us here on the Locked on Steelers podcast. Let people they can find you, follow you, and get more of your work. At A. Saunders underscore PGH on X, Instagram, TikTok, PGH Steelers Now. It's my site's account, SteelersNow.com. 
Uh, check out SN Plus. We got a new feature over there for subscribers. Southside Scoop doing a little something a little different. I want to check that out. Plus, you get all the stuff. Best stuff from me, Derek Bell, whole rest of the Steelers Now team, and my podcast, Steelers Afternoon Drive. You can find it on the Steelers Now YouTube page or anywhere you find podcasts. There you go. He's Alan Saunders of SteelersNow.com. Alan, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, thank you all for joining us here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Carter Critiques. Read my work at the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, including that new Keanu Benton film study that you definitely should check out today where we break down some of the things he's been really doing well in this preseason. And as always, you can find me here every Monday through Friday on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoy it. Subscribe to this channel to get all of our daily episodes here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. Back to more with, with more with more on your Pittsburgh Steelers here on the Locked On Steelers podcast.